You're listening to Marriage Minute with Pastors Richard and Donna Spears, impacting marriages that leave a lasting legacy. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Marriage Minute with Pastors Richard and Donna Spears. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, We are excited. Again, we're always excited to bring the material that God has put on our hearts to Amen. each each of you every week. And uh, so we're so grateful for what, for what the Lord is doing within Revival Now ministry and in our ministry in particular. Amen. So, yeah. So the last couple of weeks, oh, before I forget, please like and share all of our content. Yes, <laughs> please do that. Uh, if you get a moment, like and share the Marriage Minute with with all of your friend group in Facebook. I don't know if Instagram have, if has a sharing option or whatnot. Yeah, I can send it I'm out. showing my age, but... Anyway, just like and share our content here at Revival Now, Marriage Minute, and all of the broadcasts that that you take in and that you feel just impacted your life. So, you know, so the last couple of weeks we've been, I don't want to say Debbie Downers, but, (laughs) you know, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, we talked about when marriage gets tough um, and it happens. Marriage does get tough. And then last week we talked about, is my marriage headed for divorce? Yeah. And so you might be out there listening to this or watching this um, broadcast and feeling like, you know, you can relate to both of those messages that we've, we've been bringing, but, but there's hope. Mm-hmm. We want you to know that, and we wanted to bring something, you know, the Lord laid something on Pastor Richard's heart to say, hey, <laughs> you know, we've been kind of hammering people the last couple of weeks, so let's, let's just give them the end of the story. Right. And so we're going to close this book on, on this topic and um, bring to you today, Can God Heal My Marriage? And you know, if you've listened to us long enough, it's a resounding yes. And we'll, we'll tie that all up with a nice little bow at the end. And our marriage is living proof of that. It, so it truly is. We speak you about know, this thing today. We know by experience that God can heal marriages. Yeah. And so, you know, when, when, when I start getting down or, and and that doesn't happen often, I'm not normally uh, that way. You're Um, pretty chipper. I'm I'm pretty up because, (laughs) and I'm up because of all that God has done in our marriage and, and, and what he's doing in our marriage, even today and in and through our family, all you have to do, you know, God, I've always said it, God is a God of remembrance. Mm -hmm. And if you ever start feeling like, what is going on in my life? What is happening? You know, God, are you there? Because that's a normal thing. It's not like you should never, you know, struggle. Mm-hmm. We're, we're human, yeah. you know, but go back and look at what God has done. And you're like, that's what I do. Yeah. Every part of, of, because we truly, we would either be dead or definitely divorced if the Lord hadn't stepped in and said, listen, you guys, <laughs> there's a better way. You know, there's a, there's a song by um, a singer that's just really been, something I've enjoyed listening to recently and it's by Charity Gale and it says the song title is you keep your promises Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I just love the words of that song and it's very it's it touches me right now and it's it's about what you just said which is God keeps his promises he's always faithful and when we just look back as you said on our lives and we see all that God has done won't he be yet faithful again exactly Exactly. He, he will He's always he faithful. He is a man that, you know, he should not lie. Yeah, God is, he's, he, he's, he's not, not a man, he's right? Not, he's not a man that should lie. Right. I uh, get that straight. Um, so uh, given the culminating the last couple of weeks, right. um, you know, you may feel like you've reached a breaking point in your marriage where, you know, c- you're not communicating anymore. Um, it's closed doors and silent treatment, you know, it, communication is just pretty much not, and that happened with us. Oh, yeah. Communication was really, truly non-existent. Like if we didn't have to talk to one another, I don't think it was a conscious thing, but if we didn't have to talk to one another, that was great for yeah. me um, because it was just hard. Yeah. It was hard to a lot feel. Of, a lot of hurt feelings, resentment. Yeah. 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 Towards your, spe- and that's the, that's the truth. You know, you've got unforgiveness issues you know, floating around, you may not be aware of that. So, and we were, we really weren't aware of like, we were just doing what we knew to do and what we saw our parents truly doing. And, you know, and we've counseled couples that they just didn't have any hope. I think, I think every bit of our, not premarital counseling, because that's different, right? right. but marriage counseling, the couples who were just talking about that the other day, you know, they came in, they did, there was just no hope. There was no hope. Yeah. They, they had no hope for their marriage, no hope for their relationship. And, you know, they, most of them would directly tell us 
but we knew by their words, you know, that they would tell us, you know, yep, we have hope. We're, you know, we want to be here and work on this. We want to do this and want to do that. But we could tell by their actions and their words that they had no hope. They were at the end of their rope. They were. And typically people don't ask for help in their marriage until you're at the very end of your rope. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's the key. I mean, you know, this could be where you and your spouse are. You really don't have any hope for your marriage. You're, you, you think your, your marriage is headed for, uh, you know, destruction and you know, things can't be resolved. Things can't be healed. Things can't be restored. And you're just sitting there. I don't know what else to do. Well, here's what I would tell you to all of that, because <laughs> this is where we were at a point in, in, in our marriage, in our life. Uh, good. Yeah. I'm glad you're there. And, yeah. and, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm not trying to be hurtful. But what I'm saying is, is it's good because now you've run out of your own ideas. Can I share a little testimony? Please. So when Richard and I, Pastor Richard and I were going through our time, and I don't even know what you want to call that. Just... A just, restoration time. I don't know. It's just changing. We hadn't even got to we haven't yeah. even gotten to the place where <clears throat> we had hope yet. And and I would go in to see my pastor and I would sit there, you know, because I'm the one that had I had unforgiveness issues. Well, we know that is. I know, but I'm just saying at this point <laughs> in the marriage, I had to work on me. God was showing me things in my marriage, um, and in myself that I had to work on. And forgiveness was one of those. Yeah. That was like number one, mm-hmm. right? And time and again, I would go into my pastor's office and I would sit there. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, I'm done. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And he would look at me straight up. Like the meeting would be like two minutes. He'd be like, you're not at the end of your rope yet. And I would storm out. I'd be so mad. I'm like, you know, you don't even know, you know, and I would just get so angry. And that's just indicative of, yeah, you're right. I'm not, (laughs) I'm not ready. And that happens so many times. But what you're saying is. You have to get to the bottom, like the rock bottom. Yeah, you have to get to the end of yourself. And yeah. <laughs> you have to realize that you don't have the answers. You don't have the solutions. You don't have the ways to heal anything. And I would say to that, good. Good. Because now we can actually get to work. Yeah, we're glad you're miserable, right? Yeah. <laughs> we don't want you to be miserable. No. We don't want you to be in a difficult place. But what we do know is when you don't come to the end of yourself, um, healing can't begin. Because God's the one that heals, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We think that we can do it by our actions and mm-hmm. what the world would tell us to do. And so I'm not saying there aren't good counselors out there or whatever, but ultimately God is the best counselor. He actually sent the Holy Spirit to come and live on the inside Hallelujah. of you and me to guide us and to lead us into all truth, Amen. into healing and restoration. Amen. So we have the best counselor in the world, in the universe. And so we have to get to the end of ourselves and say, you know, I don't have the answers anymore. I need Mm -hmm. God to help me. Mm -hmm. And if you think that, you know, it's all your spouse and it's not you, we'll get into that later. But there's a whole other issue there, right? There's a pride problem. We each have problems in our lives that need to be dealt with on an individual level so that God can bring the two together in a way that is is, is, uh, healing and helpful and restorative. Mm-hmm. If we if we try to do it on our own without him, it's not going to it's not going to be the way that we want to see it uh, on the on the other Amen. side. So, it's all about coming to the end of yourself. So, here's the here's the big question that you got to ask yourself. Uh, we had to ask ourselves, right? Um, time and again. Will you commit to what God is asking of you to do? Not what you're what you're committed to asking his your spouse to do, what God's asking your spouse to do. Are you committed to to doing what God is asking you to do? It's a personal thing. That is the big question. And, you know, there's a lot of us, me included, uh, some time ago when we started through this. You know, I wasn't, when we had our challenges in our marriage, I hadn't dove into the word of God and really understood his heart for marriage Mm -hmm. and understood his heart for each and every one of us individually. And, you know, I was, I read in the Bible way back then, God Mm -hmm. hates divorce, right? Yeah. Okay. So that means I'm stuck with you for the rest of my life and you're stuck with me for the rest of our life. And we will live out this miserable existence and we'll endure until I can die and be taken up and and live in heaven and have eternal life with Jesus. (laughs) Sounds pretty hopeful. (laughs) Wasn't that, and that's full of hope. That's That's just full of hope right there. (laughs) Full of love and full of hope. (laughs) 
Yes. So what I'm saying is a lot of people will read scripture and they'll be like, okay, God tells me to do this, so I have to do this. But there's no heart change within themselves. Yeah. And there's no mm-hmm. surrendering your life, your marriage, your mm-hmm. everything to the word of to 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 your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to do that restorative work Mm -hmm. and to give you a new heart and to help you have a different perspective, one that does include hope and faith Uh and joy and happiness and everything, you know, that, that he wants, you know, so... Sometimes it is. It's very difficult to believe. It's very difficult to hold on to mm-hmm. to that that faith. But y- you have to trust God. That's it. You that's have it. the end of the line. Bought like line in the sand. Donna needs to trust God, because my ways are not higher than His ways. His ways are higher than my ways. Yeah. Just substitute Pastor Donna's name for your own. Exactly. I have to. Whatever your name is, Sally, John, David. Lucy, boy, I'm using some old. <laughs> uh, uh, whatever no, that, no. whatever, yeah, no, whatever your name is, just replace it with Donna's. Yeah. I have to trust God. That's you know, the bottom line. Yeah, in Mark twelve thirty, there's Jesus gives us. He, he said the greatest commandment is love, and I'll, I'll read this out of the NLT. The what is it? New Living Translation. New Living Translation. And it says, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, mm-hmm. all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Why did Jesus place this value of loving God above every, everything else? Here's why. Loving God, when loving God is your guiding principle for life, this is it. When, when loving God is your guiding principle for life, it will always cause you to adjust to what he requires. Mm -hmm. When loving God is the most important thing in your life, then you're going to be willing to change and do what God asks you to do. You're not asking Mm -hmm. God to get onto your agenda and say, God bless my agenda for fixing my spouse. That's not (laughs) how this works. It works when you sacrifice and submit yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ and allow him to come in and say, I see this area in your life right now where you're withholding unforgiveness. I see this issue of anger that you've been dealing with. I see this and allow him to speak to you and to give you answers on why you're getting angry, why you have this unforgiveness, and allow him to lead you through the process for yourself to heal you. You need healing. The sooner you can do that, the better. As individuals, we each need he- we each needed healing in unique ways. Boy, did we. And if we aren't willing to say, I love the Lord my God, with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my strength, then I'm not willing to submit myself to what he's asking me to do. It's personal. Because ultimately, it's a personal responsibility. it is because he's going to ask me then in turn to love you yes. with all of my heart, with all of my soul. Yeah, because that's the strength. second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, my wife and, or my spouse is my neighbor. Amen. So I have to, if I can't love God, how can I love my spouse the way that he loves me? I can't. Mm-hmm. It's impossible. You can't do it. So am I saying that change is easy? I'm not because we've gone through this. I'm, we know how difficult change can be. It's difficult. I absolutely recognize that. <laughs> um, you know, because we felt angry. Oh, my, yeah. Frustrated. We felt despair. There was disappointment, uh, hurt. You know, there's just so many range of emotions that mm-hmm. <laughs> back in the day, I couldn't even uh, understand how I was feeling. I couldn't even process how I was feeling, just the different emotions that we were all going through. Um, so when you're... Go Go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. When you're in that place and you're disappointed, it's not easy to change, especially when you feel as though you're already suffering. Mm Because that's how we felt. We were suffering like, God, you're asking me to do what? You're asking me to look at myself when if I just look over there at my at my wife and and see how she's been operating, how she's been acting, how she's been withholding love toward me. You're wanting me and not respecting me. You're wanting me to change me? Really? Yeah, cuz I can I can guarantee you and I it's almost like the Lord is just showing uh showing me a picture of myself right now um uh, back in that time in our life and you know when our marriage got tough um and changes were required and that change pointed in my direction mm-hmm. because everything within me pointed in his direction 
and I didn't need to work on anything, right? Yeah. Like I, I knew I wasn't perfect, but I was just blinded to what I needed to work on. Sure. And yeah. I didn't feel like doing it. Yeah. You know, and I, I truly, I was like, when the Lord shone the light directly on me, it was like, it was one of those God moments that just defined a period of time in my life where it went from, okay, this is bad to it just got a lot worse for me because I had no one to blame but myself. And when you understand and you have that knowledge and you understand that, okay, God's not worried about what's going on over here. He is. He cares about yeah, he that. Cares. And he's handling it because I need to take my hands off of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Donna, we've got a lot of, of, of things to work on with you. That's kind of how it was. You, mm-hmm. you need to sit down because we've got to talk. Yeah. And, and in those times is when I was really getting into the word. Right. And really, really mm-hmm. understanding uh, the love of God, the love of Jesus, the love of you know, his plan for my life, uh, what he says about marriage, what he says about divorce, all of that, you know, so I'm taking all of this in Yep. and he's asking me to apply it to my life when I'm reading it to apply it to your life. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy to do that. But it I'm telling so you, I'm telling easy. you, it was, it was painful. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was painful. We, we did say we were going to be more positive on this episode. But we got to get there, right? And we're just being real and honest with you, you yeah. know, and, and we, we... I guess we're telling you from where we came from, we, yeah. knowing that you can tell from where we are today, we can laugh about our past. Exactly. It doesn't bother us anymore. Yeah, it doesn't. It truly doesn't. And and we are an open book. I could care less. If you want me to tell you about our life, we're an open book because mm-hmm. all of it points to Jesus. All of it points to, for the glory of God. Because he's the one that did it all. So can I can I say please? Some, this was coming back to me because this is something that I I was dealing with when we were in the the midst of our uh, our worst time, and you know this is how guys think I think typically right we're like okay we've you know we've shared what our hurts are we we've got it on the table can we just move on now <laughs> I I think that's how most men think we we just hey can, can we you just, just get over can it? you just get over it but that's not how a lady operates you know there's a lot of emotion there i mean i've heard we went to a marriage conference some years ago and they talked about how you know when 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 a hurt comes for a lady um for the wife you know her heart is like a crystal and if you've ever seen crystal dropped on the ground it shatters into thousands of pieces mm-hmm. and that's what happens to a lady's heart you know, for us guys, we can process and move on and just kind of compartmentalize it and say, it's it's done and over. Hey, we've got this thing. Hey, let's bring ourselves back together. We're good buddies. Let's move on. That's not how it works for ladies. There's a lot of healing that has to take place. So this is, I, I share this bit of backstory because I want you to understand the scripture that I was reading at the time when the Lord was dealing with me about, can we just move on? Uh, you know. We can we just forget? I just remember you might have even verbalized that to me. I may have. I think I did. <laughs> I'm sure I did. Knowing me, I did. That's a wonder so, you get a frying pan upside your. I'm head. not going to read the whole scripture, but basically, it's it's from Matthew chapter five. Uh, it starts in verse twenty one, and the and the the subheading under that is, or above that is murder begins in the heart. Right. So I'm reading about this whole thing. Jesus was talking about the beatitudes and all these other things, assault and light in the earth. And then he talks about murder begins in the heart. So as I read through that, I get to the final verse, um, verse 26, and it says this. It says, Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there until you have paid the last penny. So that scripture was talking about murder. Like, you know, that even anger in that scripture was a problem, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not the context of which, I mean, that was the context by which the scripture was talking about. But when I read that last Uh, scripture in verse 26, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 26, this is what the Lord was speaking to me. He goes, I'll handle her. You just have to be patient and wait. I know your tendency as a guy is to like, can we just move on and, and, and get this thing going and get our marriage back on track? God knew what had to happen with her. I had to take my hands off and allow that to happen in the Lord's timing, not my timing. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the Lord was teaching me through that scripture. So sometimes when you read the word, yes, there's the the normal context of what the scripture is speaking about. But then there's the rhema word or the revealed thing that God wants you to really know in that time and that circumstance. And that's what came to me at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was very helpful. But these are the things 
as an example that God will actually teach and lead you if you will allow it. Mm -hmm. And you have to be Amen. patient and trust him in Amen. that. And so that's just a powerful thing to, to, to consider. It is. So so what are we saying? Like we said the last couple of weeks, <clears throat> marriage does get tough and it, and it can be painful and difficult to move through that. Uh, not that God is making it difficult, but oftentimes, like we've said, I then had to understand my part in things. Yeah. He personally, I had to completely shut that side of things down and work on myself. Right. But here's what Amen. I know. When I have the right view of God, a loving father wants the best for me. And that's what I had to understand. Like all of this pain, all of everything that I'm going through, God is going to make good out of it because that's what his word says, right? God cares about every single aspect of my life. Yeah. So when I understand that, then I'll be willing to to submit to his call to rise higher and grow in my marriage, in my relationships, in my life, and in my relationship with the Lord. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11, you know, we could probably quote this from heart, but oh, I have yeah. to read it because yeah. we're on I might want to read. I might want to read some more because there's some good stuff here. Well, go even. ahead. You just read the whole thing. Okay. <clears throat> so Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Because God knows the plan he has for your life and for your marriage. He want, he, There is hope because he's the one. He's the hope giver. He's the redeemer. He's the restorer. You know, can I add to Yeah, you? please. Um, <clears throat> let's just picture. This is just something the Lord dropped in me. So picture way back then when things were getting tough and we go our separate ways. Right none of what's happening in our life right now. We didn't see it. We, we did not even Had see no that clue. where we are today and what we're doing today and the things that the Lord is lining up for us today was even a possible, we weren't even, that wasn't even on our radar, uh, but it was all. on God's radar. Exactly. It was on his radar and he knows better. It's back to what you quoted earlier. His ways are higher than our ways. His Amen. thoughts are, he knows, <laughs> he knows the beginning Trust from him. the end for Trust every him. person's life. He Amen. knows that. Amen. That's, a, that's the amazing God, big yes. God that we serve. And so when you step in and say, no, God doesn't really know what I need. Yeah, actually he does. He does know. He does. And it says right here in Jeremiah 29, 11, but I want to read a little bit before Okay. Jeremiah 29, 11, and a little bit after. So I think verses 8 through 14, and this, and I'll explain why. So this is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Do not let your prophets and fortune tellers... Now, the people of Israel at that time were getting ready to be taken captive into Babylon. So this is what the prophet Jeremiah was actually speaking about. Um, <clears throat> but I want to I pull this out, the, con, the, the context of the application for marriage here as well. Do not let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon, trick you. Do not listen to their dreams because they are telling you lies in my name and I have not sent them, says the Lord. So there's going to be people that... So here's the here's the application for marriage. There's going to be people that come into your life that says, you just need to leave this guy. You need to leave this woman. This is not going to be better. These are liars because if they're not following after the one true God, they're not giving you godly counsel. Now, I'm not saying a person should stay in an abuseful, abusive relationship. Right. Um, physical, uh, mental, emotional abuse, continued activity like that, we would call for a separation for a time, see if we can get reconciliation. If the, if the patterns of behavior do not change, then ultimately, yes, that may lead to divorce. But I'm not, I'm not trying to specifically say that here. What I'm mm -hmm. saying is, is that the world would tell you, just leave, mm -hmm. you know, do you get away from him. There's something better out there. You happy. That's the wrong mindset to have. But if you have the mindset that you're going to trust God to heal you and to heal your spouse, then he'll bring about the change Amen. in his timing, as I was saying before. Uh, then it says, this is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years. So you're going to be in there for a time. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in, uh, like we were, you're going to be in a tough place in your marriage for a, for a time. Yep. Uh, yep. And you have to allow that to happen so that you can be healed. Um, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised. And I will bring you home again. Hallelujah. That makes me cry. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to cry. It says, and I'm going to skip to verse 12 now because we read verse 11. It says, in those days when you pray, see, this is when you seek after his face. Seek after God. I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. See, this is where we're submitting to God in his ways, not, not our ways of solving the problem. Um, I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity. This captivity of, uh, of a demoralizing, uh, no hope, 
destructive marriage. Mm. He's going to end that where you feel like you have no hope. He'll end it. He'll restore it. He will bring it back to the life that it was intended to be Amen. for your marriage. That's what he does. Um, I will in your captive restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you, and I will bring you home again to your own land. Your Hallelujah. marriage Thank is you, a is supposed to be a fruitful land. It is supposed to be a land of uh, that's flowing with milk and honey and delight and joy and happiness. Amen. That's what God wants to do. So there's more to that. Just that mm-hmm. scripture. When I read through that, I'm like, man, this is powerful. powerful. Oh my gosh, Mm. this is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the one that that wants to come in and heal my land, heal my marriage. Mm. And he will do it. Amen. So John said in uh, uh, 1224, he says, Unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it cannot produce new life. So true. That's what has to happen. We're kind of going back to that place where we're saying, look, you have to trust God. You have to submit to him, submit to his ways, to his his teaching, to restore you, to heal you personally. You can't always look and point the finger. There's things going on in the inside of you as well that needs to be dealt with. God wants to deal with those things. He's a loving father. God says, hey, I discipline those that I love in, in Hebrews Absolutely. chapter 12. Absolutely. I discipline those whom I love. He will discipline you, but he's not doing it out of Uh, a lack of love for you. He's disciplining you because he does love you. And he wants to bring you to that, that great marriage that you, your heart has always desired. That's what God wants to do for you. So when, you know, when the Lord pointed out that I had a lot to work on, did he still have a lot to work on? Absolutely. But he was getting my focus off of him (laughs) and onto me and, and my relationship with the Lord. Amen. Which is where it needs to be. Amen. John 3.30, uh, the, the, Bap- John the Baptist. I'll get this out in just a second. <laughs> Come on. There's so much that's in me right now that I want to get out. And I, I'm exactly. stumbling from my words right now. But anyway, John uh, chapter 3, verse 30 says this. He must become greater. Speaking about Jesus. Mm-hmm. John was about to be asked by Jesus to baptize uh, Jesus was to, he was, Jesus was asking John, wow. Jesus we'll was asking John to <laughs> baptize him in the river Jordan. And John had the revelation that, look, Jesus must become greater in me and I must become less. That's because all of the ways yeah, of the world, right. all of our upbringing, all of the growing up, everything that we've experienced in life isn't necessarily the truth and the way and the life that Jesus has for you and I. And so when we back off and we say, look, I need Jesus to become greater on the inside of me, because when I allow the Spirit of God to move and flow inside of me, He's going to lead me into the better life. He's Amen. going to lead me to that promised land that, that I want, which is a better and greater and more fulfilling marriage. That's Amen. what He wants for me. But I have to become less. Jesus has to become greater. So can God heal your marriage? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you haven't figured it out, He's the only one, yeah, the one and only, the the single person that is going to heal your marriage. There's no doubt. You're not, and your spouse isn't. Submitting to the Word of God, when you submit yourself to the changes that God is asking you to make in yourself personally, in your relationship with your spouse, your relationship wins and your marriage wins. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, so, you know, I said it earlier in the broadcast, I mentioned today that You may not have any hope for your marriage. We both have talked about that, right? Um, And I said, good. Again, not sarcastically, but but good. Now we can get to work. Because why? It it, it takes us letting go of ourselves and how we want to fix the issues and allowing God to come in and fix things. Mm, It's a pride issue. It's a pride issue. It's a heart issue. issue, It is a heart issue for sure. So here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that you should do this alone. I'm not saying that mm-hmm. because that's, that's kind of unfair is to say, Hey, you know, pastor Richard, that's all great. You know, uh, am I supposed to do this alone? No, you're not. You're not supposed to do this alone. Um, you're supposed to have someone that, to be a helper to you. So God sent his son, Jesus to fill you with his love and his power to be transformed. Amen. That's what God did. 
He did it over 2,000 years ago. He sent his son, Jesus Christ. And so if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to do that right now. Because Jesus is the one that can actually come in. He says, I will give you, when you accept me, I will give you the Holy Spirit. He will come and live on the inside of you, and he will help you be your guide, your teacher. He'll be your standby. He'll lead you into all truth. He's the one that's actually going to help you. He's going to bring the wisdom. When you ask for wisdom from God, God says, I'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. And so wisdom only comes from God. So when the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost comes and lives on the inside of you, you have the very Spirit of God living on the inside of you. You have the best teacher in the world guiding you and leading you through a very difficult process that we understand. And so I want to give you that opportunity. Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Well, you have to do, you have to recognize, or you have to do three things. We call it the three R's. You have to recognize that you're a sinner. You have to recognize that. You have to recognize that you've fallen short of the glory of God. That's what Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, you've fallen short of the glory of God Amen. and you've missed the mark. You've missed the mark of God's perfect standard and you need a savior and his name is Jesus. And secondly, you have to repent. You have to repent, understand that you're a sinner. You have sinned. You've, you've fallen short of God's glory. You have to repent of your sin. All your past sins and everything moving forward, you, re, you repent of those things. And when you repent of those sins, Jesus will forgive you which is the last R, which is you receive. You understand that salvation is not something that you earn. It's not something that you work for. It's something that is a free gift to you. And when you understand that the work on the cross that Jesus did for you, you can receive this free gift of salvation that God has for you, Amen. that Jesus paid a great price for you to have. And when you have him living on the inside of you, all things are possible the Bible says, to him who believes. And that's what I want to do for you today. Will you pray this prayer out loud with me right now to receive Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Dear Lord Jesus, I recognize today that I am a sinner. I recognize that I have fallen short of your perfection, of your goodness, of your glory. I recognize this. I recognize that I have missed the mark. And I repent of all of my sin. And I ask you to forgive me of my sin right now. Thank you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for being raised again on the third day for me. Thank you that you're sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding on my behalf for me today and I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you. Thank you for this great work, this, this great sacrifice that you made for me. That if I were the only one living on the earth, you would have still done this for me. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for bringing me home. Thank you for giving me salvation. It's in Jesus' mighty name that I pray. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer just now with Pastor Richard, we want to be the first to say welcome to the family of God. Romans 10, 13 says, For all or everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So when you prayed that prayer with Pastor Richard, you called on the name of the Lord. So by the authority of God's word, you are saved. You're born again. And from this moment forward, you're on your way to heaven because you have Jesus in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, please go to our website at revivalnow.com. Click that big red button right there on that homepage. It says, I just got saved. It'll connect you with some video resources to help you get started in your new Christian life. And you can also fill in your contact information. And if you do so, we'll email you some resources to get you started. And we'll be praying for you by name. So go to revivalnow.com, click the I Just Got Saved button, and follow the prompts from there. Well, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, before we go, I'd just like to pray over everybody. Sure. Um, because I just believe that prayer works. It does work. And so as we pray, we're believing that supernaturally, through the very Spirit of God, that marriages are going to be healed in Amen. the name of Jesus. So we thank you for that. So, Father, we thank you for each and every one listening, watching out there. Father, we thank you that they may be in a tough place right now, but, Father, you are 
uh, you keep your word. You keep your promises. You are faithful. You will redeem. You will restore. You will heal marriages that you, that Jesus. seem to be in utter destruction. Hallelujah. But no, Father, you will rebuild the walls of, of the marriage. Of each and every person listening, you'll rebuild the walls of their marriage, Father God. Thank you for coming in and healing their marriages, healing their lives individually, and bringing about something they never thought could be possible, Father God. But hey, I thank you for your word, Father God, that, that says all things are possible to him who believes. And Father, we thank you for right that for right now. Yes. We thank you that thank you're you, healing Jesus. marriages. We thank you that you're bringing couples back together again. We thank you for keeping families whole and unified in Jesus' name. So Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you. Thank you for listening today. Catch all of our podcasts at RevivalNow.com and send us your Marriage Minute questions at MarriageMinute at RevivalNow.com.